Welcome to part two. In this video, we are going to be finishing up our side menu. We're going to start out by adding our table view to our menu controller here. Then we're going to configure out all of these table view cells with the corresponding options. And then lastly, we are going to set up our action handler for when we click on one of these options. Um, so let's go ahead and get started by jumping back into our code. And you're going to want to hop into your menu controller and the configure table view function. So now let's add our table view to our menu controller. So we're going to say view.add subview table view. Now we need to create our constraints. So we're going to say table view dot translates auto resizing masking to constraints equals false. Table view dot left anchor dot constraint. Let's go down here and select that option. Uh, equal to NS layout anchor blah blah blah. And we're going to say view dot left anchor. And make sure you type out dot is active equals true. We're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this line three times. And we're gonna say bottom anchor, right anchor, and top anchor. And then we need to change these over here as well. So just do all that stuff. And that's all we need to do to add our table view to the sub view or to our menu controller. And now we need to create a background color equals dot dark gray and then let's call our function up in our view did load method and that should be good in adding our table view to the menu controller so that's looking good guys there's our four, four table view cells um, we're gonna change the row height and we're gonna get rid of all these extra um, uh, separators so we can actually just say uh, table view dot separator style equals dot none and then uh, we can say table view dot row height equals 80 okay so let's go ahead and uh, see what that looks like now then we're going to configure our cells so that's um, what our our cells are looking like now this is looking pretty good now we just need to hop into our more menu option cell and we can say uh, background color equals dot dark gray. Now we need to create our properties for this uh, cell. So what we need is an image view and a uh, text label here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's pretty simple. We're just going to say let um, icon image view UI image view equal this. We're going to say that IV equal UI image view turn IV and put our little open and close parentheses there we're gonna say IV dot content mode equals dot uh, scale aspect fit IV dot clips to bounds equals true okay and now we are gonna add that um, sub view to our cell so we're gonna say add sub view icon image view we don't need to type in view.addSubView here because this is a, uh, a UI table view cell. And then we're going to say icon image view that translates um, auto resizing maxing to constraints equals false. We want to center this in our cell and then pin it to the left side of the view here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say icon image view dot center y anchor dot constraint. Go down and find that option. Then we're going to say center y anchor that is active equals true. And then we're going to say icon image view dot uh, left anchor equals, uh, oh sorry, dot constraint is equal to left anchor dot is active equals true. And now we need to set a width and height. So we're going to say icon image view dot height anchor dot constraint and we're going to say equal to constant and we're just going to make this uh, let's make it 24 by 24 icon image view dot with anchor dot constraint with constant we need to say dot is active equals true as well okay so let's give this a background color really quick dot uh, blue and let's go ahead and run that and see if that is showing up. So we should see a little blue guy. Okay, that's good. We just need some padding there. 
So uh, we can go here and say constant. So go, go to your left anchor and say constant. We can just say 12. So that's going to move it 12 pixels over to the right. Um, so that's looking good. Now we need to create our description label. So we're going to say let description label UI label that we're going to say let label equal UI label return label and label dot text color is dot white label dot font equals UI font dot system font of size and we're just going to make that 16 and let's add some sample text in for now sample text and let's go ahead and add that sub view as well so we're going to say add sub view description label description label and uh, this is going to be pretty convenient guys we can just go ahead and copy and paste this stuff and just change icon image view to description label oops We actually don't need a height and width for this because the with labels it's automatically determined in Swift, which is pretty nice. So the center that that's going to remain the same, and the left anchor we need to change to the right anchor of this icon image view because we want that to be anchored to the right of that image view there. So we're going to say left anchor dot constraint is equal to icon image view dot right anchor, and you can leave the constant at twelve. And let's go ahead and run this again now. And that's looking pretty good, guys. Um, we can make that text a little bigger, and uh, or not. It doesn't really matter. Make it yeah, 16 is fine. Who doesn't really matter? You guys can mess with the UI stuff all you want. Um, so that's looking good. Now we need to create our model for this stuff. So I told you we're going to be using an enum. That's how I like to populate my table views with different options because, like I said, it makes handling the uh, the, the selecting an option a lot easier. So we're going to go here into model, create a new file, Swift file, and we're going to call this menu option. And it's going to be an enum menu option. And it's going to conform to the int protocol. And we're going to say case profile, case, uh, what, what are all our options? Inbox notification and settings. Inbox case notifications case settings and uh, we need to be able to get um, a description text from this so we're going to conform to this pr uh, protocol that Swift gives us called custom string convertible and it's going to ask us to implement this dis variable description here so this is how this is going to work we're going to say switch self and then it's going to ask us to iterate through all these cases and then we are going to say Let's just uh, delete all that there because it's just going to be one line for each thing. So here we're going to say return profile, return inbox, return notifications, and return settings. Okay, so that's it for our enum, guys. We're going to see how this is implemented here in just a second. Okay, so let's fix this here. And now we also need an image for each option. So that's what this is gonna look like. We can just go ahead and copy and paste that whole little uh, guy there and save our image. And it's gonna be of type UI image. And we actually need to import UI kit in order for that to be recognized. And um, for some reason, Swift doesn't allow you to use image literals um, in this situation. So we're gonna have to use UI image named. So we're going to say return UI image named. And we now we have to go in and get all of our strings, which is super annoying. But you got to do what you got to do. Okay. And we also need to provide a default value because that is optional. Okay. So now let's go ahead and just go into our assets folder settings uh, menu option and just paste all those values in there guys I know this is annoying but it's gonna be over with soon menu white 
there and the last one is profile oops okay so now we have a description and an image for each one of our options and if you guys are un unclear as to what's going on here it's going to make sense in a second as to why we're conforming to this int protocol um, basically each one of these are going to be represented by an integer 0 1 2 and 3 so when we fill out our table view cells 0 1 2 and 3 we can populate it using this enum and we're going to see how to do that right now so let's go back to our container controller or sorry our menu controller and uh, go back into our um, cell for row at function in our table view so what we're going to do is we're going to say let menu option equal uh, menu option like this raw value and we're going to initialize it with our index path dot row and again that's because um, we're going to say this menu option uh, for the first index which is index zero is going to give us back this guy here and then for the next index it's going to give us back the menu option that corresponds to the integer value of one which is our inbox notifications and settings. So that's how I like populating my table views, guys, when we're gonna have options like this. It's uh, the most robust, uh, sort of most clean method of doing so. Um, and then all we have to say is um, uh, cell.descriptionlabel.text. This is the cool trick, is equal to menu option.description and then cell. Uh, image view or icon image view dot image is equal to menu option dot image so it's going to get the description and the image for each one of those menu options based on whatever index path we are on for our table view so now when we run our code that stuff should be rendered out really nicely um, we just got to change that blue background so let's go back into our uh, menu cell and just take that guy out and that's going to be what exactly what we need then the last thing we need to do is link our actions to that so that's looking really good there guys um, it's a little smaller than the original version but you guys can go ahead and mess with the sizes and stuff like that it's not that hard just change the font size or the image size um, now what we need to do is go to and create our action uh, that's linked to each menu item so we're going to implement our this did select row at method that we get for a, with our table view and we want that to correspond to the correct menu option so go ahead and copy and paste that in there and now what we need to do is create an action handler for uh, clicking on this menu option and we want that to be handled by our container controller similar to how we had our container controller handle clicking on this uh, hamburger menu to um, do all of that functionality so we're going to be using that delegate that we created that protocol so we're going to create a delegate in our menu controller and it's going to be equal to that home controller delegate and now what we are going to do is call that method down here that handle menu toggle that handle menu toggle that we created in that method but we need to be able to pass in this menu option to that so that when we click on that menu option it's going to toggle that a menu back over and then perform whatever action we would like right so uh, let's go ahead and modify this protocol now so we're gonna say uh, handle menu toggle for menu option menu option menu option just like that so now if we build our project we're gonna get a couple errors right so let's go and we actually need to make this optional and I'll explain why in a second does not conform to protocol so let's go ahead and implement that method go ahead and cut that stuff out so that's one fix then it's saying it's missing a parameter so this is in our home controller and the reason we want that value to be optional is uh, this right because when we have our home controller showing like this and we want to toggle that menu over we don't have a menu option to pass in so we're just going to say nil for that so it's going to keep all that functionality the same and now when we are doing this from our menu controller we uh, can actually set that menu option so we're going to say for a menu option and then we're going to pass in that menu option there right 
So now we need to uh, missing argument recall. Uh, I think that's good now. Build failed. Oh, we need to make that optional. Okay, now if we build our project, we should be good to go. All right. Now in our container controller, we need to write out the functionality for what we want to happen when uh, that we click on that guy. So we're going to say function did select menu option. Uh, and that's going to be menu option, which is going to be a type menu option. Right. And then uh, we're going to say switch menu option to iterate through all the cases. And I just let this error pop up so it automatically implements that stuff. And here, let's just write out a print statement saying uh, show profile. Show inbox. Show notifications. And print. Uh, settings All right so this is going to be our action handler for this guy so now we need to figure out where and when to call this method we just created or this action handler so you guys remember we want this action to be completed once that animation completes so this is where that completion handler in our show menu controller method is going to now take effect so it's actually easier to just rewrite this um, to get the completion handler, so that's 0.5. Uh, delay is going to be 0, 0 0.8 for the damping, 0. Dot curve, ease in, out, animations, hit enter, and on the completion block, hit enter as well. And we don't need that Boolean variable, so just put an underscore. We're actually going to take this guy out of there, put that there, and then uh, this in this completion block is where we're going to call. Um, this method here and we only need it when we're hiding the menu because that's when that uh, method is going to or that action is going to take place when the menu gets hidden or after it's done so say did select menu option and now we need to be able to pass in a menu option so we need to add that as a parameter up here so let's go ahead and say uh, menu option menu option and let's actually call this uh, animate instead makes a little bit more sense and uh, change that down there as well okay and then we can pass in that menu option and actually make that optional and then unwrap it down here menu option equals menu option else return and that's because we don't want to have to unwrap it uh, down here so now when we're going to add in that call, it's just going to be menu option. And then the last thing we need to do, or we'll add that self in there, is set our delegate in our menu controller. So we're going to say menu controller dot delegate equals self. Um, I think I must have deleted that on accident. Nope, it's right there. So we go ahead and build our project as build failed. Okay, so we actually need to make this of type uh, menu controller. And we should be good to go. Okay, now we're good to go guys. So let's go ahead and run our project and that should be it. Um, I'll add in the little animate status bar animation too. So you'll notice that we're only gonna see this message print to the console once the animation is done. Show profile, show inbox, show notifications, so on and so forth. So that's looking really good, guys. Um, if you guys want uh, to get that functionality of showing a new view controller, um, it's pretty simple to do. I'll leave that to you to figure out. Um, if you want me to add it in, just send me a message and I'll tell you how to do it. Um, essentially, you just add the code in for whatever action you want here. Um, so now uh, all we have to do is uh, animate that status bar and then we will be done. So let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna go back up to our init section. 
Okay guys, so we're just gonna add two override variables here. It's gonna be preferred status bar update animation. And you're gonna say return dot slide. Then you're gonna say preferred status bar hidden. And you're gonna say return is expanded. Okay, then we're gonna go down to our handler section. We're gonna say function animate status bar. And we're gonna say UI view. Um, we can actually go ahead and copy and paste this guy here. And we're just going to change this. We're going to say self dot set status bar uh, appearance update, and go ahead and save that and run it. And that should be it. I know this video got a little long, guys. Oh shit, it's not working. But we need to call our function. Duh. All right. Um, oh, sorry. And we're going to go ahead and actually delete that code there. Sorry. And then. Um, outside of this else block call animate status bar. Okay, run that and now we should be good to go. And that's looking really good guys. So that's it for the side menu. Uh, sorry this video got a little long guys. Um, I hope that you liked it and uh, this is really the most professional way and start, most robust way to make a side menu in my opinion. Uh, any criticisms are welcome. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.